All right, we'll go ahead and jump right in. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, tonight we're here to discuss uh, ROCON 2023 and the 2023 US Rowing Atlantic City Indoor National Championships. It definitely looks a little bit different this year, um, so I wanna dive in and give you some insight to it. Uh, if you don't know me, my name's Sarah McAuliffe. I'm the Director of Competition at US Rowing. I'm gonna have a few other people on the call with me, so I'm gonna hand it over to Reggie Robinson to let her introduce herself too. Yes, hi, I'm Reggie Robinson. I'm the events coordinator and I work on the events team with Sarah. Awesome, and we also have Brett Gorman here from coaching or learning and development. Brett, if you wanna introduce yourself too. Yeah, sure. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Brett Gorman. I'm the director of learning and development. So that's all things education at US Rowing these days. Great, happy to be here. Awesome. All right, so we can go ahead and dive in. If we can go to the next slide. Perfect, so why we're here. Um, to go over in a quick agenda of what you'll all see tonight. Um, Brett, if you wanna hop to the next slide. Whoop, that's not the next one. There we go. Perfect, okay, great. So number one, uh, what is this event that we're talking about and why are we combining it? Uh, we're gonna give you some insight into what the experience will really entail. Um, then we're gonna dive deeper and give you a preview into the indoor championships and then follow up with a preview into ROCON. Um, so what is happening with the, with the convention this year as well. Um, at the very end, we'll go ahead and address all the Q and A. Um, so please go ahead and put your Q and A um, in, or your questions in the Q&A, not in the chat, and we'll address all of those at the end. Well, I'm sorry, Sarah, it keeps going backwards. That's quite all right. Okay. All right, awesome. So why a combined event? We're gonna hop to the slide after this. So what you'll see here, if you have not seen the news about what's happening um, with both indoors and convention, just to give a little summary of it, we are taking the indoor national championship um, and it's staying kind of around the same time that it has been. So it's starting um, with check-in on February 3rd and racing on February 4th and 5th. Uh, indoors has generally been in that February to March timeline. So that is staying relatively similar to years past. Um, we're also taking our annual convention, which uh, has typically been in December, but moving that to February and really creating this environment that allows for competitors, athletes, coaches, um, whoever it may be, to come to this experience and get everything and anything out of um, three days of just rowing focused material. So number one of our goal of combining this event is to truly create a cornerstone experience for our community. We want everybody to look forward to this moment in time where you'll, in the morning, you'll be able to see uh, a Watts test happening, a triathlon happening, a 2000 meter masters race happening. Um, and then also right after that, be able to join in a session with some of the top speakers in the rowing community. On top of that too, you'll be able to really introduce yourself and meet other uh, members of the community there. So again, getting kind of that social, the, the competition and the learning and development aspect of rowing all in one area. Our secondary goal, so as we're looking for um, partners and venues and locations to host an event like this with, um, we are really focused on like who is going to bring us uh, the most opportunity and excitement around growing the sport of rowing. Um, this year, we are extremely excited to be working with ASIRA, and that stands for Atlantic City Indoor Rowing Association, located in Atlantic City, New Jersey. They came to us and are just very excited of growing indoor rowing in their community um, and have great resources to do so. So as we move forward, looking for partners like ASIRA and Atlantic City um, and their governing groups over there, uh, who are really looking to grow the sport of rowing in ways that haven't um, necessarily been standardized. Finally, our goal is to deliver a high quality, memorable experience. So we want you all to come to indoor national championships, to come to convention and find the best of the best. This is where like you can't miss an opportunity like this to get the top competition, the top speakers. Um, and again, like leave with just a really well, like really exciting overall fun experience for you. Okay, so to dive deeper into the U.S. Rowing Atlantic City Indoor Championships. Whoa, that's not what we wanted. Everyone gets to see. Avert your eyes, please. <laughs> We're rolling with the punches. Okay. 
So one of our number one goals with this championship um, and with U.S. Rowing altogether is growing the indoor rowing experience. Um, how U.S. Rowing plans to grow that rowing indoor experience, um, what, number one, education, number two, access, and number three, excitement over indoor rowing. So focusing on education right now, how we're going to accomplish that with this indoor national championship event. From an educational standpoint, we're going to have some learn to erg sessions that are happening um, throughout all of the days. So we really want to create this atmosphere where, yes, like our most experienced rowers who have been rowing for 15, 20, 30, 40 years, they can come in, hop on that erg and still get that competitive feel that they've been waiting all year for. But we also want to have somebody who's walking down the street of Atlantic City or maybe joined a CrossFit gym um, a couple months beforehand, be able to hop in and really learn how to erg properly um, from the best of the best. So education is the forefront of how we can grow indoor rowing and then um, flat water rowing and all other types of rowing as well. On top of that, uh, with our athlete and coach convention pairing. So like I mentioned, we're pairing this event. It's truly going to be bottom floors, indoor rowing experience, top floor is education. So you can truly do a triathlon at noon and then head up and listen to one of the best speakers um, a couple hours after that. Number two, so being access. Uh, one of the great things about indoor rowing is that it is so easy for somebody to just hop on an erg right there. Um, on the water is a little bit more challenging. Um, so we identified that we're able to create this environment where somebody can hop on, take a few strokes in the matter of a couple seconds and get a taste of what rowing can look like for them. How we're going to increase access through um, the Indoor National Championship is the inclusion of non-traditional rowing gyms. Um, so I bring up CrossFit, Row Home, um, a few other kind of erg-based, rowing-based gyms that you do experience or fitness-based gyms. Um, we're going to, we're being reaching out to them, getting them and their audiences onto the ergs. So they're able to see what typical, I'll see typical rowers look like. Um, how they can fit in with our group, how we can fit in with their group and make it an experience so that uh, our traditional rowers are able to go up against other people um, in the new forming kind of rowing community. Number two with access. So yes, we are absolutely sticking to 2000 meter racing. You'll see a lot of 2000 meter racing, but you're also gonna see a lot of um, varying event types and distances. So if the 500 meter dash is for you, you're definitely gonna find that here. If the 100 meter watt test is for you, you'll find that here. But also if you wanna compete in the triathlon with a bike erg, ski erg and rowing, that'll be there too. So truly let's appeal to the audience um, of the greater kind of fitness community and give them a taste of what we are doing in the rowing community um, and show them that it doesn't necessarily just have to be 2000 meter racing. However, we absolutely will still include that and encourage our non-traditional rowers to, to join in with that. And then the third goal. So again, I mentioned excitement um, at the Indoor National Championship this year, we are going to have a fantastic athlete expo. So as soon as you walk into the, um, the main hall where all the ergs will be set up, you'll see about 40 vendors that are of course rowing vendor based um, and also wellness vendor based. So really looking at the whole athlete and how we can um, make sure that you as a rower are able to walk in after registering on Friday, uh, walk into this experience and get everything from clothing options to uh, massage gun experiences to our typical rowing vendors to various other things that um, are going to better you uh, as the athlete. Also too for excitement, we all know that um, convention brings a lot of fun in regards to just meeting up with new new people, um, seeing old friends from a long time. So outside racing experiences, to give a quick taste of it. So Friday evening, we're gonna be having a pre-competition dinner. Um, and then throughout the weekend, you'll see little offerings um, with a show your badge pass within Atlantic City, which looks like, hey, I was a member of the indoor rowing championships. Here's my kind of pass of it. And then here's my discount opportunities within the community there. So something to do on all three days of this experience. To give a little bit more insight of what to see on day to day. Um, so going into Friday, Friday, you're going to experience athlete check in. Um, we'll have a really good opportunity for you to make sure everything's settled. If you have any last minute ads, any lineup changes, we'll be able to take care of that there. Give you your goodie bag. 
You'll also be able to go into the event expo. So again, I mentioned 40 vendors just sitting on the vendor floor plus extras um, within the convention hall. You'll be able to go in, shop as you wish um, and, and see what else you need to buy um, or experience at this expo. Then on Friday evening, I mentioned the athlete pre-race dinner. So this is, um, if anyone's been an, at a marathon or an Ironman or a triathlon, there's generally like a big dinner where all competitors can get together, um, meet new, meet old friends, and, and just talk about what's to come for the, the 2K or the 500 the next day. And then of course, Rocon. So we will be having sessions um, on Friday. So a great opportunity, joining in on the Rocon sessions, uh, increasing your learning and development ability uh, with rowing in general, but then quickly hopping downstairs and checking in for indoor championships. On Saturday, like I mentioned, you're going to see 2000 meter and 500 meter dash options. You're going to see a triathlon with the bike, ski and row. You're going to see many team relay options. Um, and then from the college recruiting and youth population, you're going to see a lot of college coaches um, having the opportunity to view these youth athletes coming in um, to the pipeline. While it's not 100% final yet, we're working through details on a youth ID camp, um, and more details will definitely come about that. That would take place on Saturday. Sarah, can I interject here for just one second? Um, the sure. other thing that's happening on Saturday is we are going to be offering some athlete programming for youth for the afternoon. Um, that will very similar to, you know, it's part of ROCON, but it's specifically targeting the U19 youth athlete um, for about four hours of programming will also be part of convention after, after they're done doing their 2Ks and ID camp uh, events for that day. Um, they also have the opportunity to take advantage of um, some educational opportunities. Perfect. Again, focusing on like the wellness of the whole athlete there too. So that's perfect. Thank you, Brett. Um, going into Sunday, so same thing, focusing on the events that we have listed right here. Um, I do want to touch on, on Regatta Central, you'll see a good event list and you'll see the populations that are taking place on each days. So we have something for kids who are five to 12 years old. We have U15, U17, U19 audiences. We have relays for that audience as well. We have masters racing, uh, we have open racing and U23 racing. So you'll see a little bit for everyone here. Advance. Yes, please. Awesome. Oh, well, that, okay. so, that yeah, that's a little bit about indoors. I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Brett. Um, and then, yeah, we'll take any questions of indoors at the end too. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Thank you, Sarah, for that great preview. All right. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm, my name is Brett Gorman. I'm the director of learning and development. Formerly, my title was director of coach education. And as I said, our new direction with this department is creating educational opportunities for all of our members. And while, while coaches we see as a very important part of our membership, especially you all have such great access to all of the athletes. I mean, really, you're you're a key you're a key stakeholder that we're going to continue to offer our traditional level one, level two, level three coach courses, as well as additional courses coming for 2023, which I'm very excited about. Um, we also are going to be expanding into athletes, educational opportunities for athletes, courses for athletes, as well as those that are targeting member organizations, how to run and sustain a club, how to whatever stage your current club is, whether you've got 10 members, you've got 50, you've got 400, that we're offering a resource that's going to help you get to where you want to go that next stage, whether that's growing your membership, or maybe you're already humongous and you're struggling with how do I manage all these different diverse groups, whatever it has, that's where, that's where we want to get to with our educational platform. All right, so this this slide's called Convention Reimagined, and part of you know us taking the last couple of years where we've gone virtual is you know I think we've had a lot of time to get feedback and to think about you know how conven conventions have been done in the past. There will definitely be some elements that will be familiar. We will still have regular lecture based where yes, there's interaction with raising hands and asking questions, but mostly it's that communication of one speaker or a panel going out to the audience. Um, but I think we'll go ahead and start with as Sarah mentioned. It's a new time of year for convention, as long as I can remember and anyone I've asked can remember, it's always been in December, which I think offers some positives in terms of, you know, end of fall season. That's usually a time when things have slowed down with athletes, particularly in the youth and collegiate areas. And it's a time that kind of works for a lot of people. 
But also I think one of the challenges is that with everything that we have going on in the summer, it's hard for us to be as laser focused on convention as we want to be. And again, going back to that, one of those first couple slides that Sarah talked about how we want to offer the best experience possible that we can, we want to do it justice. And so us moving into February, when Asira came to us with this wonderful opportunity to have both convention and indoors in the same place, we really did see it as a positive and that, okay, it's not August, so time to plan convention. Who can we get? It's okay. What do we want this event to look like? What do our coaches need? What have we heard for the last couple of years, especially during COVID and when we were virtual that people were missing and how can we create this really amazing cornerstone experience for everyone? So that as the person planning it, the new time of year is very helpful for that. In-person focus, yes, like we are always looking for virtual opportunities and we will continue to offer virtual opportunities. We definitely got great feedback from 2020 and 2021 that people loved being able to sit in the comfort of their own home and attend convention, especially if you're coming from far away. We know conventions often on the East Coast for West Coasters, the virtual convention offered a really great opportunity to be able to participate and partake. Again, virtual is not going away for, you know, our, our, a lot of our educational opportunities are still going to be remaining virtual, but we do see this as an opportunity where we can focus on in-person. What have we been missing? What are the areas where we can get really hands-on, you know, hands-on boats, tools in hands, face-to-face -face interaction, small group work, um, functional movement training is going to be one of the seminars workshops that we're going to be offering. And it's really hard to do those things virtually. So we're very excited to focus on the in-person. Um, new faces, both from the community, really looking at, okay, who do we want to engage with and have come and present a convention, and also those within U.S. rowing. We have a lot of new faces in the organization who have some great expertise to offer, and so I think the combination of both of those, I believe, will give a very different feel to convention. There will definitely be speakers that you recognize, but some of them, but there will also might not be, there might be some that you don't, and we, it's our job to market those and accurately describe those so you can see what's coming, um, but we're really excited to offer some new voices uh, at this convention, and I already mentioned the hands-on learning. Again, lots, we can get boats into the convention center. We had a meeting with Asira just last week um, where we were able to confirm with the convention center that, yes, you can get a whole eight in there, and yes, there's room to pivot it, so we're really excited that we're going to be get, getting to offer um, some really exciting things with rigging. All right, now it's time to talk to tracks and who our target audiences are for this. So actually, I've always shied away from the term tracks because I know that historically at convention, we've had some pretty specific ones. And it's, you know, what veins are you going to go in? Okay, am I going to business of rowing? Am I going to diversity, equity, inclusion? Am I going to do the high performance track the whole time? We really see these two, athlete development and program management as the biggies as the biggies, the ones that the bulk of our stakeholders can identify with and are going to find great programming within. It is a little bit broader than some of those more, you know, streamlined tracks and includes a lot of those elements. But I also think that it allows us to focus on what can we do well? Like what are two things that we are consistently hearing from our members, from our coaches that they want help with? Help with? So athlete development, we'll start there. And I think when you first think athlete development, a lot of people think about the nuts and bolts of it. No pun intended. Yes, it was. Um, the nuts and bolts of, okay, how do I get faster? Splits going down, rigging numbers. What's the latest on physiology? What's the latest tech I can use to measure my athlete, athlete performance, whether it be a peach system on a, on a boat or, you know, what's the latest, you know, what are we doing with the Apple watches to make sure we're monitoring our athletes sleep? Yes, that stuff is important. That's going to be in there, but we're also going to be comparing, com combining that with athlete wellness quite a bit. All right. A lot of, a lot of mental aspects here, a lot of, um, you know, stress management. That's something we're continually hearing from program leaders and particularly coaches, how much time they're having to spend with their athletes on not the things that they think of our traditional coaching, but actually how are we helping our athletes with the rigors of school, college applications, uh, you know, SAT prep, you know, uh, and of course, wanting to make go boats go fast. Um, so, so how are we combining those things? So that's a key, key focus for the athlete development. Um, one of our keynote speaker, speakers will be um, Yozi Vendershot, who is our current chief and new, new chief of high performance. Um, he'll be giving a great keynote Saturday morning after a nice big breakfast, nice big hot breakfast, I want to comment. On. We're going to spring for that, um, that we're looking forward to going over pathway, pathways at every age category. You know, what is the track for athlete development, appropriate volume? How does he see the U.S. system? He's going to be at that time, he'll be about a year into his role. And how is he going to take 
what he's done with some of the previous federations he's worked with and apply it here in the US. Um, I've got a couple other lists there, hands-on rigging for all, you know, how do you rig for every person in your boathouse? Again, that's gonna be a hands-on training. We've got uh, the U19 men's head coach, Eric Gerke, who's also uh, coaches at Oklahoma City, will be coming on and running that session with several assistants. Um, move well to row well. That's gonna be a functional movement seminar for both athletes, one for athletes and one for coaches run by Lindsay Shoup from the Positive Coaching Alliance. Um, coxswains. We're going to be focusing on both cox athlete coxswains as well as how to coach the coxswain. Mary Whipple's going to be coming in for that. Um, so yeah, uh, what's the audience? Really, it's everybody. You know, coaches of all levels and youth and masters athletes. We also have Volker Nolte coming in to head up our masters programming for convention. On the program management side, this one I think is huge. Um, you know, how are you running a program? You know, this encompasses everything: safety, um, fundraising. Uh, marketing and communications. What are you doing with your social media? You know, how are you making sure your boathouse is friendly and is for all, for everyone? How are you appealing to as many people as possible? So what Sarah was talking about with bringing in some of these kind of fitness fanatics, whether it's Row House or Orange Theory, the CrossFits of the world, we have to grow our sport. The more we grow our sport, the better we're going to be, the more sustainable we're going to be, and the more we're going to be able to do for everyone. So that's definitely something that we'll be focusing on for program management. And how are you recruiting as many people as possible from all different areas? Um, I mentioned um, safety. Um, Tom Rooks, our um, U.S. Rowing Safety Associate, will be heading up in, the, in a, a seminar of evaluating the safety of our program. It's going to improve, include working on your safe physical safety plan and going through a safety audit checklist. Okay. It also include, you know, how are you making sure you're making your boathouse more accessible to everyone, you know, ramps, what, where do you need to get those? Where do they need to be? All that good stuff. Who is the target? I mean, I would say this is everyone as well. Like what, you know, every, cause leadership will be a key part of this as well. Um, but yeah, coaches, program leaders, board members, volunteers, referees, everybody. Okay. Move on. How does this keep happening? Canva doesn't like me. There we go. I'm sorry, everybody. It's not letting me advance. Okay, we did that. Great. All right. So these are some of the community speakers. I want to be clear that these are just, these are our confirmed, like 100% definitely going to be there. We have a lot of people that like 85, 90. It's just, we need to get their topic dialed in. We need to get them their speaker kit. So this is just a snippet. This is not everybody. Um, we've got, you know, we've got people coming from the youth sphere, people coming from the collegiate sphere, people from, you know, recreational rowing community, community. I mentioned masters. We got Volker coming. Um, Doc Wayne is a wellness uh, organization that will be focusing on how to, you know, main, how to prioritize wellness as well as competitive success. Um, Positive Coaching Alliance. If you're not familiar with them, look them up. Like lots of great seminars coming from there. Um, Kamal and Kyle from A Long Talk. We've been working with them at U.S. Rowing. I know they've worked with Three Rivers Rowing, University of Washington. They're currently working with Columbia uh, as well. Columbia, Columbia Rowing, rowing for all of their programs. Um, so yeah, lots of great stuff there. I mentioned we have a lot of internal resources that we're also going to be leveraging, including, you know, Amanda, our chief executive officer. I mentioned Tom, um, you know, Colleen Bailey is our chief of marketing and communications and her and her team will be talking about, you know, social media and also like, you know, what, what is, what's been changing at U.S. Rowing with how we get information out to members. Jenny Trays, our chief of community engagement is a huge resource for this convention. And she and I are working closely to make sure that inclusion is, you know, kind of in Projected everywhere. It's not one siloed track, you know, one room over here. We're really taking an eye for everything. Okay. Great. So just, just like Sarah did a little schedule at a glance, we're going to get going noon on, on Friday. Um, check-in will be running all that morning. We'll have some coffee and pastries and, you know, everyone can say, how's it going? Um, the, ed, the day will end with Amanda's keynote and that will kick us into the Rocon happy hour that will be on site. It will be included in the registration fee. Saturday will be an all day affair, all day long. Um, we'll breakfast will be from seven to 8 a.m. And then Yozi will be kicking off with his keynote at 8 a.m. One thing I wanna mention is that with us doing indoors, convention is a puzzle piece because we've got you know people who are coming that are probably gonna wanna do both, whether that's you're a coach who has athletes competing. So obviously you're gonna wanna be down on the convention floor, uh, sorry, on the um, indoor floor to support them. Or you're a college coach who's like, great, I'm gonna do convention. I'm also gonna get some eyes on what's coming in the U15, U17, U19, 2K categories. We are gonna purposely, we are purposely structuring this so that you can do that. Yozi will be done at 9.30. We'll be focusing on our master's content for several hours while the youth are doing their 2Ks, all right? So we're really trying to make sure that we can fit it all together so people don't have to choose 
what they go to as much. That will, we'll have breakfast and lunch on Saturday and then Sunday morning, same thing, 7 to 8 a.m. breakfast, and we'll be going through noon. We will be running our regular sessions, will be 60 minutes, usually 45 minutes of presenting with 15 minutes of questions. And then we have our keynotes which will be around 90 minutes each. And then our workshops, those are going to go between 90 minutes and up to two hours and 15 minutes, depending on the breadth of the workshop. I promise if it's two hours and 15 minutes, we'll take a break in there somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Okay. Okay. Pass options. So yeah, this is important part. Registration is going to open on Monday. We are doing an early bird special. Okay. So we have our individual, um, if you're just buying for, for, for yourself, and um, you do need to be a basic member to come to convention. So everyone needs to have a current basic membership in order to come to convention. All right. So we've got the early bird price through Black Friday. 1125 is Black Friday. So that will go until end of day on Black Friday. And then we'll be upping the cost after that. Next, we have our certified level two and level three coaches. We are really moving into an era where we want to encourage certification and we want to offer incentives for it. We want to make sure that our certified coaches, they're getting dis more, di more discounts. They're getting, um, whether it's on courses or convention. So we are offering a significant discount for our certified level two and level three coaches. On the next slide, I'm going to go into like how you take advantage of that discount. Okay. And then next we're doing some fun things with boathouse passes. Um, we just go for the, we're going into some boathouse passes. So we have a boathouse pass of up to five. See the pricing there for the early bird, as well as the after, as the uh, after the early bird special. For that, for the, whoever's going to be inputting that for your club or your team or your staff, whoever's going to be doing that, when you register, you will be asked to enter those five names. Who can take advantage of a boathouse pass? These are people that work within your within your organization, and they it can be a volunteer. Absolutely. Um, but this is meant to be for program leaders and, um, or it could be a college coaching staff, head coach, couple assistants, maybe the rigor wants to come graduate assistant, you name it. Um, but yeah, you will be asked to enter in the names as well as the member numbers of all the people taking advantage of that pass. Okay. And again, everyone needs to be a current member. If someone on a boathouse pass list isn't a current member, they will need to renew before they're given their badge um, when they go into convention. All right, just want to touch on, you know, what does a certified coach means? mean? Um, if you've taken a level two course, taken a level three course and have completed it, great. That's awesome. There's also the piece of requirements that you're currently compliant with safe sport, having a background check on record with U.S. rowing, um, that you completed your mentor hours, boater safety, and of course, first aid and CPR. A lot of coaches that I deal with, you know, have all those things. They need to have those things anyway for their daily job. Um, but the question is, do we have it? Do we have a record of that? And so we have an online submission form for submitting those things. Um, this is what a profile should look like if you are good to go. Okay. Um, I won't say who this person is. Might be me. Um, but this is what, yeah, this is what it should look like. There should be no red on it. So if you've got red through it that says your safe sports expired or your background check, anything, you need to get that to us. And then we will issue a coupon code. So that's what the next slide is going to go into a little bit, just a little bit of the process. You need to log into your member portal, check your requirements. You need to fill out the request form that we'll have on the website to obtain the coupon code. We'll confirm your certification and we'll issue the coupon code that you use on Regatta Central to take advantage of that coach discount. Okay. Now, Sarah, my phone was blowing up, I think, and uh, I see quite a few questions in the chat. So, so should we go to those? Yes, definitely. I'll let you decide what order, because I think there were some that were just coming in about what I was just talking about. Yeah. Um... Brett, if, I think we'll start with some indoors ones at the top. Some of the sure. questions were answered. There was a question about cost. So we have that slide there. Um, I'm also going to say that this recording and this slideshow will be available on our website too, um, along with everything going live um, this coming Monday. So this is the opportunity that you'll have to, to register where all the information will be there, both indoors and convention would be live on Monday. So information will definitely be out there. Um, okay, so a couple questions. I'm going to start off by going to indoors and Reggie, this one's for you. Um, how, there's some vendors in the chat here. How can a vendor get introduced to indoors and the expo and be involved in both events? Absolutely. Yes. So the first uh, thing that we'll have you do is email um, the AC indoors at usrowing.org uh, email address and that way we can send you the vendor deck that we do have. Um, if you do have uh, any additional questions, you can also submit them there and then we'll reach out to you um, using that email. 
Awesome. Great. There's another question in here too. Um, a couple of people actually of just wanting to know how they can get involved with convention and indoors. So both maybe not necessarily um, like a vendor perspective, um, but like maybe a speaker perspective, or they just want to be involved there. Um, I'm, I'll go ahead and just say at the end of this, uh, there's the emails, the go-to emails that you'll want to be contacting. Um, so if you think that like you have some um, some really good insight, please email us and we'll gladly be able to, to talk through it with you. Okay, so focusing on indoors um, again. So first, I love this question. Please explain the ways that competitive rowing indoors differs from outdoor com competition besides the most obvious, of course, the lack of water. Um, so yes, you're right. <laughs> I will say, I wanna set the scene of what you'll experience with indoors too. Um, so again, coming through the hall, you're, you're in this massive gym, you're in this massive convention hall, um, you're checking in at the ticket booths, you're walking through 40 vendors, and then you're going to see 100 plus ergs, um, competition ergs on the floor. You're going to see a massive jumbotron there too, where everybody is going to be both streamed from like a visual standpoint of what they're actually erging, but also their icon will show up um, to show you where they stand against the, the full audience. Um, we, we won't have uh, or we might have um, multiple heats of some events, depending on entry numbers, um, but it truly is a very electric atmosphere. Um, behind that too, so behind the ergs, we're gonna be having um, stadium seating. So there's a plenty of opportunity, bring your friends, bring your family. Um, maybe you know a family member is gonna to wanna to join in on the watt test or the 500 meter sprint, um, or even the learn how to erg sessions. Um, but this is an experience that like, again, what differs from on the water versus on land is just our, our accessibility. We're able, somebody can come off the stands, hop on an ERG and learn it right there. On the water, it gets a little bit more complicated than that. So again, this is stepping stones for it. So really good question there. Uh, will there be virtual racing components to indoor championships? There will not be any virtual racing opportunities at this championship. Uh, we really wanted to focus on ensuring that we're delivering a great in-person experience. When it comes to a hybrid model and, and including um, virtual with it, it does get complicated in the sense of making sure that connections aren't going down at home and it's not therefore affecting the people on the, the erg room floor at Atlantic City. Um, maybe they're uncertain about who really won because an at-home connection may fail. So we're really focusing on being in person, um, going back to, to you know, the pre-pandemic kind of style of our events and capitalizing on that. Um, again, some good questions in here. So overall question, since the initial announcement was made about the combined event in new time of year, what has been the reaction from the rowing community? Um, I'll speak for me and then Brett, if you want to touch on it, um, sure. I would say it's, it's very positive. And I think one thing, um, and you can see this from all of our events right now, but I think all of us, U.S. rowing included, along with boathouses, um, are, are, we need to find ways to be resourceful um, and need to find ways to make sure everybody's time is uh, being really appreciated. So now instead of traveling to two separate events, um, you're able to really focus on like, how do you get, you know, five, 10 of your coaches to one event and a whole busload of athletes there and really maximize your time. As Brett mentioned with convention and indoors being together, it is a huge puzzle piece, but we're being very mindful of like how we can make sure that the youth athletes are happening, not when the youth coaches are gonna, you know, want to sit in on session there. So all of those details are being um, thought about and we, we love all feedback. So definitely contribute that to uh, both our emails and the chat, but so far it's been a really exciting movement. Yeah, I'll chime in. I think no one's told me to my face that it's a terrible idea. <laughs> start uh I say I definitely I got one or two emails about like you know are we going to be offering some virtual stuff because you know again from an access issue and you know and I want to reiterate what Sarah was just saying that you know there are, there are, we can offer virtual for a lot for lots of things throughout the year but it, it's when you go to hybrid so I'll give convention as an example we did look into okay could we live stream some of the sessions some of the speakers that gets pretty complicated uh in terms of if you're going to have a live video feed coming in. It's definitely something we're willing to explore in the future, but for our first year back in person, we often, it's easy to, to try to do too much and we want to do it really well. So we're going to be focusing on the in-person this time around. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
Um, I'll go one more indoors question. And then Brett, I think we have quite a list for you. Um, so being, do you have any sense at this point of how many states will be represented by railroads and how many competitors may participate? This is the question of the year. I don't have a full um, idea of how many will come. Um, we definitely have goals and we, I'll say like, in regards to reaching out to the non-traditional rowing communities. So again, like the CrossFit gyms, the row houses, that type of thing. We have heavy, heavy goals on just pulling that population in. Atlantic City is a great environment um, for both CrossFit boxes. Um, the lifeguard races are there. So really taking advantage of that audience and making sure that they feel welcome in this, in this atmosphere. So I don't have a quite the goal or quite the idea of what the number will look like, but we're very hopeful in taking like strong marketing efforts on how we can um, ensure that everybody, everybody knows about us. Okay, so Brett, we're gonna switch gears. Um, and we are going to go into convention here. Um, so we have a comment in here. Can a boathouse pass be applied to the youth athlete programming? Really good it's question. A great, it's a great question. I should have included that on a, on a slide that the youth programming is going to be a separate registration. It is not, you do not have to pay $500 for that four hours of, of youth programming. And that's going to be one, Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's going to be a, a one, one option for signing up for indoors as well as that athlete programming. Mm -hmm. You're correct. correct. Yeah. Yep. yep. Great. Yeah. No. So there will be a separate registration for the indoor, for the youth athletes, indoor competition, um, adding on that educational programming. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, we're going to go through these right here. Um, can we talk a little bit more about the DE and I offering? So the question is, is rowing for all the extent of the DE and I offering? Absolutely not. Uh, as I met, like Jenny Trays, our chief uh, of community engagement, and I are meeting about convention at least twice, <laughs> at least twice a week, if not daily, and communicating about it. And a lot of feedback we've gotten is that years when we've done a separate track or we've put it separately or we've done like you know that that it does it doesn't it's always going to be in competition with something. It's always going to be in competition with rigging or you know physiology or something, and people have to pick. And what we're really trying to do instead, I'm going to use rigging as an example. So Eric Gerke running the rigging session, we're going to bring in um, Tom West from CRI. We'll be doing that in tandem with him so that they can work on rigging for rigging for everybody in your boathouse, which includes our adaptive athletes, includes, you know, our master's athletes, includes, includes everyone. That's an example of how we're approaching this. So for example, uh, what are some other examples? It's really coming from every, everywhere. Um, but we also have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I mentioned that we have a long talk coming. That's about, you know, how to, how to structure your program to make sure that you know the history of racism and what and what's and what what are things in your boathouse that you might not even be aware of that are turning people off um and how to make your boathouse more inclusive um it's definitely not the only thing it's 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 heavily featured but it's also it's included with other stuff um we're really trying to make it seamless and not just a a one-off topic here and there um several panels will be featured as well um stem to stern will be presenting on you know their their top tip their top tips tips for um, recruiting younger talent and and how to foster that great environment that they stand for. So there's a lot. Perfect. Um, so a question here uh, or a thought of a topic. Um, are are you race ready? Everything you need to know before the starter says go. It looks like this person is um, a referee, a current referee too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, no, and I mentioned I mentioned Tom Tom Rooks, who will be doing quite a, a few different ones. And one of the topics that Tom is going to be covering is also um competition and both traveling to competition as well as what do people need to know, but like what do coaches need to make sure that their athletes, their uh, toxins know when the, what's their responsibility for rules of racing and things like that. So that's already included. Um, doesn't mean we couldn't do another another session on it. I would say we're about 85% programmed for convention right now. So if someone out there has got a great topic idea, hit me up. Would, would, would love, we, we still have a, a couple more spots to fill. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, will coastal rowing be discussed at all? Yes, that's definitely on the, on the list. Um, you know, someone we haven't mentioned uh, on this call yet is Dan Garbett, who actually is a member of Asira. He's our coastal coordinator. And he's been heavily involved in this event and is really kind of our boots on the, boots on the ground with the community there and making sure that we're bringing in as many elements um, as possible from Atlantic City. And that includes coastal. 
yes. So there definitely will be coastal. Awesome. All right. Um, question about early bird. Brett, if you could just explain a little bit of when early bird pricing starts and ends and reasoning behind that. Yeah, it starts Monday and it ends um, end of Black Friday, 1125. The reasoning behind it is we want to incentivize people signing up early um, because we do have, there are certain things that we're going to have to communicate to the convention center, especially when it comes to meals. That's a big one. I don't know if any if, if anyone on this call has run events like these before, but the meals are one of the biggest expenses uh, to be able to be able to feed people. Also, like the more people we know are coming, the more we can message them about, okay, it's time to build out your schedule. We want to know what sessions people are going to, because that will affect what rooms we assign. One of the great things about the convention center in Atlantic City is, as I mentioned before, we have tons of space. That also means that we're going to have to be make a lot of decisions about, okay, how many people do we think are coming to this topic versus this topic? Because we have a lot of different size rooms. So that's why we're incentivizing that by price. Because And also, the more people come, the more flexibility we're going to have, have. So we want to incentivize people to sign in early and so that we can plan and make sure your experience is as awesome as it can be. Definitely. Um, Brett, there's a comment in here just talking about um, the great variety of voices there are out there. Um, and instead of just relying on the same people uh, in the rowing atmosphere as speakers, um, I think you, you've done a good job of showing uh, the variety out there. And like you said, that list that we showed is just the very, very peak of it. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to touch on a little bit more of just what's to come and kind of the process that we've um, invested in reaching out to speakers? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're definitely, we definitely will we'll be having several speakers from outside of the rowing world, especially when it comes to topics like mental wellness, and especially when it comes to topics, um, diversity, equity, inclusion, things like that. Um, we are definitely looking for outside of the community. I'm going to be really real with everyone, though, that also there are budgetary, there are, there's a budget. There's, and, you know, for people that, you know, there are some great people all over the world. We cannot afford to internationally fly everybody in. Um, so those are some that we maybe we're going to be having some virtual add-on sessions with people like that. Um, but yeah, no, we're definitely, we're talking to some people from the USOPC in different sports as well. And we're hoping to get those confirmed as soon as possible. We understand that rowing is not the only place that we should be looking and it's not. We're looking at a lot of different areas as well to get the most diverse speakers that we can, that can offer us lessons from other sports, other areas of business, you name it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to go back to indoors uh, just for a second there. Um, so one question about entry fees for indoors. So we will have all that information live on Monday to give you like a sneak peek of it. So generally indoors has cost us about $35 um, per entry there. So it's a, it's a sliding scale depending on the event, but all that information will be up on Monday on Regatta Central and our website. Uh, we have a question in here about the World Rowing Indoor Championships. This is a fantastic question. Um, so qualification for that championship closes February 1, um, asking if we can, you know, have any influence on, on letting our regatta um, or letting the races that the athletes are competing in uh, act as qualifiers for that as well. Um, so I can say that we're trying, definitely. Um, we, you know, from a U.S. rowing indoor perspective, um, our season, you know, it starts a little bit later. Um, not all of us are, you know, we're, we're still kind of in the thick of indoor training um, mid-January. So the February 1 to mid-February is a really good time for us to add like the national championship because we've, we've finished the um, winter racing season there. So the short answer is we're trying and we'll have, we'll have a more of a complete answer um, once we discuss with them a bit more. There's a question in here about parents, parents watching their athlete race. We'd love to have you. Um, will there be a fee for, for parents coming in? Um, at this point in time, again, all that information will be live on Monday. There may be a very nominal fee. So think like $5, $10 um, to come in. And that's just going to keeping the costs low uh, for our competitors as well. Um, a big event like this in a big convention hall, of course, um, has, its, has its cost list. But again, we're trying to keep it very minimal for our competitors to allow for people um, all over to just spend their weekend with us, whether they're rowers or not rowers. So more information to come on Monday. Okay. Um, Brett, I'm going to go back to you for a second. Um, we have a question or a concern, I guess, from early birds. So hold on, let me read through this really quick. 
So the, the comment here is that uh, early bird ticketing is, is ending too early. Um, he suggests making it a little bit later in the game. Um, do you want to speak on that? I will, I, I will, th I'll, I'll think on it. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, that will probably be, that will be the biggest discount that we will offer. That doesn't mean that we won't offer another discount, you know, potentially leading into the Christmas, so, you know, the holiday um, season potentially. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'd be curious to know, like, why, like, why does it matter if, you know, if you're on, if you're on this webinar right now and you know, it's coming, like what, you know, what, why, what, why that matters, but, um, but I'm, I'm open to it. I'm open to it, but, um, there are costs to convention there are. And so at some point we do need to raise the price. Um, so, but we're, we're trying, we're doing everything we can to get the information out there so that people can, can get registered and take advantage of that early bird pricing and especially the early bird coach certified coach pricing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Brett, I'll also just add to, um, in, in this, like speaking from the regatta end of things, the earlier that we know information for, we can plan better for, for the great audience or the smaller audience or whatever that may be, um, and allocate resources to it. So if we have, if we know early on, we're going to, you know, blow the number out of the water of just how many people are coming, we're then able to accommodate early on, say, okay, now we need a bigger haul for all of you, or now we need more food and we can plan this weeks in advance kind of rather than scrambling at the end. Um, and also from a registration standpoint too, the week of is a hard time to register. I know I see people on this um, call here. There's a lot of regatta directors and vendors here. It's hard as you're getting closer and things are ticking and, and you wanna make sure that you have the, the people and the information out um, in advance. So I think we're just trying to do our due diligence of making sure that you all have a great experience and the earlier that we have a understanding of who's coming, the easier we can do that. So that's kind of the incentive of a quick early bird um, rather than extending it out a bit longer. All right, just a couple more questions here. Um, Brett, question for you. How much of the level two certification can be completed at convention? How much of it can be? We are not planning to offer um, an in-person level two at convention. We've taken that fully virtual. Um, we are gonna be offering different courses um, in, in person moving forward in 2023. That's what we're working on developing. But right now what we've really enjoyed during COVID is creating a consistent experience for level two. So we're not planning to do a level two coach certification. We do have a December one um, and we will have two January ones virtually leading up to it. Um, so that people can focus on the other uh, opportunities that we're going to be offering in person. Um, the one thing that you can take advantage of, though, at convention is if you are a level two certified coach who has not completed their mentor hours, any session you attend, that will come, that will contribute to your mentor hours. That's perfect. Awesome. It looks like we're coming to the end um, of questions right here. I have one more. Uh, will a referee pass be available for convention attendees? We are we we do not plan to offer a referee pass. Awesome. Okay. It looks like if there's any last questions, go ahead and put them into the chat now. Um, other than that, I'll just say um, again, this slideshow, this recording will be up on our website um, in the next couple of days, so we can edit it. Um, then we'll go ahead and open all of our registrations on Monday. Um, and as you all saw the emails, go ahead and please. Please let us know um, if you have any questions and we can help you get registered. Um, other than that, we really look forward to seeing you all in Atlantic City in just a couple months. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening.